So, hey, uh, I'm Shikhar, I work for Etsy, and I'll be talking about Elasticsearch Discovery. Uh, let me tell you a bit about Etsy before I start. Uh, so Etsy is a global marketplace for handmade and vintage goods. Uh, you can find a lot of creative and quirky items on Etsy. Uh, we have over a million active sellers and over 20 million active buyers uh, from nearly every country in the world. I'm on the search infrastructure team. Um, we, have a, we mostly use solar for most things, uh, but since last year, we also have Elasticsearch in the mix. Uh, so for our main listings index, uh, we have it sharded by hand, although we do use solar distributed search. Uh, and Elasticsearch, we're using for some of our larger indexes. Um, and for new use cases, we are starting to consider it. So why are you looking at logos of all these Apache projects. So you have Solar, which is uh, a search service, and it's got a distributed component, Solar Cloud. Uh, HPACE, a distributed data store. Uh, Kafka, a distributed messaging system. And all of these Apache projects actually depend on another Apache project, Zookeeper. Uh, so Zookeeper is a pretty solid uh, project to solve the problems of distributed consensus. And it also provides some nice ways of monitoring the health of connected nodes. So you can do things like uh, failover if one of them goes away, release lock, that kind of thing. Uh, but using a strong central coordinator like Zookeeper is certainly not the only way to do cluster coordination. Uh, for example, uh, these projects like Cassandra and React. And Akka is an active library for the JVM. And it has a cluster module uh, so all of these projects, for example, are using gossip, uh, their own implementations of uh, gossip protocols. So here, instead of having some central coordinator that's external to the system, they are, uh, the nodes are constantly exchanging information about the cluster. Uh, so what does Elasticsearch do for cluster coordination? Uh, does it use this thing called Zen? Uh, it certainly doesn't outsource the responsibility to some of the system, and that's often touted as an advantage. Uh, and it actually doesn't even have to be Zen, uh, because Elasticsearch discovery is pluggable. Uh, in fact, there used to be a Zookeeper discovery plugin, um, but that's out of date. And that's actually the caveat there, uh, that uh, since Zen is the officially blessed way, uh, these APIs can change. Um, and if you're a plugin author, you kind of have to stay on top of what's going on. Uh, so I became interested in digging into how Elasticsearch discovery is implemented uh, in implementing this plugin called Eska. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to use Akka cluster uh, because it's like Zen. Uh, it doesn't need an external system. Um, in case you aren't familiar with Akka, it's a terrific library written in Scala and it's inspired by the Erlang actor model for concurrency. And it has a cluster module which um, provides a peer-to-peer -peer membership service. It's using a, uh, a gossip protocol, as I mentioned, and it's also got failure detection mechanisms built in. Uh, so that's pretty useful. And uh, this graphic depicts uh, the state changes that an ACA cluster member can go through. And this is pretty much what I'm piggybacking on top of for Eska. Uh, we can't really discuss discovery in Elasticsearch without understanding the cluster state. Uh, so if you want to examine how it is uh, manipulated internally, uh, the internal cluster service is a good place to start. Uh, that's the in-memory representation. That's the source of truth. Uh, and you can actually look at your own cluster's cluster state by hitting that endpoint and uh, get a JSON representation. Uh, so what are all those sections in the JSON tree? So let's talk about nodes first. So that's uh, all the Elasticsearch nodes that are forming the cluster. Their addresses and unique IDs, uh, host port, that kind of stuff. And this is actually a transient state. It's not being persisted because with Elasticsearch, the cluster composition can be elastic. So nodes can come and go. Uh, there isn't much point persisting it. Uh, this is probably, I think, uh, in many ways, the meat of the cluster state, the metadata. So you've got things like index templates, if you're using them for all of your indexes, there's settings like number of shards, replicas, uh, your mappings for those indexes, aliases, and uh, the, the other things that I couldn't show here. Uh, and 
This is persisted because it's not the kind of state that you can reconstruct easily uh, because you'd lose information. So it's persisted not as the JSON, but in other ways. And we also want to talk about the routing table. It's good to know about. So it's uh, for your indexes uh, for each of the shards that they have, what replicas are there, what nodes they're on, which replica is the primary, which is just a plain replica, and the state, like, for example, a shard failed, uh, that will show up here. And another one that's, uh, so, so there's routing nodes right there, so that's just a denormalized version of the routing table. So uh, when I was, uh, I think by now you have a good understanding of the cluster state. Uh, while I was building Eska, I kind of discovered that what Elasticsearch is calling discovery uh, is a number of areas. So there is certainly an element of node discovery, uh, which is figuring out what nodes form the cluster. But it's not even the primary responsibility, I think. Uh, so the model that Elasticsearch is using uh, requires a master node to impose uh, a total ordering on updates to the cluster state. So you need leader election to figure out who the master should be. Uh, and all the writes in the cluster that are happening on the master, they need to be propagated to other nodes in the cluster. So State publishing, that's also a responsibility of the discovery module. And finally, failure detection and handling. So how do you figure out if a node has become unavailable? And if it has, what do you do about it? Uh, so to give you an idea of the space for concrete implementations, I'll go over the properties of Zen and Eska uh, along, the dimensions, along these dimensions that I just mentioned. And when it comes to Zen, if someone from Elasticsearch says that I'm lying, they're probably right. Uh, the best uh, reference for Zen behavior is probably the source code, and I might have interpreted something incorrectly. Um, so let's talk about node discovery first. Who's going to be part of the cluster? How can nodes join and leave? How, how, do, how, do, how do all the nodes know about that? So uh, with Zen, uh, you have this unicast mode and a multicast mode. Uh, with unicast mode, you have to provide this static list of, uh, it's called gossip routers, but I don't think Zen is actually uh, using gossip, but that's what it's called. And these uh, nodes are part of the cluster, and they're also like other nodes, when they join, they can talk to them to become a part of the cluster. I didn't know much about multicast mode, but my understanding is anecdotally that it doesn't work very well. Um, and uh, with Eska, the idea is similar. Like Arca cluster provides, uh, Arca has, uh, Arca cluster calls them seed nodes. Uh, which says are contact points for new nodes joining the cluster. Uh, so coming to leader election, what's going on there? Uh, how do we elect a master? And this is always going to be this, uh, from the set of nodes that are eligible to be the master. And by default, uh, all of them are, but you can change that. So have ded dedicated master nodes. And with Zen, uh, we saw that uh, in the nodes section of the cluster state, uh, they have these random looking strings as IDs. So those are UU IDs, and it's basically picking the lowest uh, node ID. And there can certainly be edge cases here, and uh, there was that infamous issue with the uh, split brains when there's a partial partition. And the handling of that uh, has improved in recent releases. Uh, with Eska, we're using uh, this uh, ARCA contrib module called uh, Cluster Singleton, which basically gives you the oldest uh, member of the cluster with a certain role. And here, oldest is uh, relative to uh, when it joined the cluster. Uh, and this is leader election gone horribly wrong with multiple masters. Uh, you never want to see that. So uh, I believe at this time, uh, like when we saw this, we just started using Elasticsearch, and we had it configured incorrectly. So we had both unicast and multicast enabled. But we did have minimum master nodes configured, so it was kind of strange to see this still. Uh, but anyway, this is Elasticsearch 1.2. I haven't tried to reproduce it, but I'm pretty hopeful that it doesn't happen anymore. Um, so coming to state publishing, uh, the way that Zen and Eska are propagating cluster state changes from the, from the master to the other nodes, so with Zen, it's uh, using the same internal Elasticsearch transport that's used for, for example, distributed search requests. And the state is being serialized and compressed and sent down the wire. And it's actually blocking for a configurable amount of time. Um, 
but it's kind of weird because if there is a timeout, there's no actual consequence. It just logs a warning. So it's uh, not really necessary, and with Eska, it's completely asynchronous. This doesn't mean that we can't wait on acknowledgments. It's just that the publishing mechanism doesn't need to deal with that. And uh, so with Eska, we're actually using uh, Akka remoting. Uh, so you can treat remote actors as if they're local actors, and that's really cool. And so long as your messages are serializable. Uh, so right, right now what happens is uh, any change to the cluster state, like say you're adding a new field to your mapping, this means that the whole binary state needs to be shipped around to all the nodes in your cluster. And the cluster state can actually grow to be quite large, like in a large cluster with lots of uh, indexes or shards. It could be tens of megabytes. And this can prove to be a bottleneck because you're sending from one to n nodes over a single network interface. And with Zen, you might even be blocking after every publish for up to 30 seconds. And um, so this can be a bottleneck. And something that's very exciting is this uh, new enhancement in the next major release of Elasticsearch uh, 2.0, where, where it'll be possible to only publish diffs of what exactly changed. Uh, so let's talk about failure handling. If the failure is what happens, um, so with Zen, uh, you've got the master, it's monitoring all of the nodes in the cluster. And all of the nodes are monitoring the master in case it goes away. Um, I think Elasticsearch defaults are more optimized for cloud environments. So if you're running on bare metal, you might want to be more aggressive around things like uh, retries and timeouts. And Eska also has some similar but different knobs. And in, in the case of Eska, uh, the primary responsibility falls with Akka cluster, and you've got uh, basically every node monitoring a subset of uh, other nodes. There is some randomization there. Uh, and we also do something at the Eska level where we use the seed nodes, which were used in discovery. Uh, so we used to, so they're kind of like arbitrators when there is a failure. And if Akka cluster tells us that a node has become unreachable, we get the seed nodes to vote on it by pinging the unreachable node. And if a majority of them is like it's uh, unavailable, we decide, OK, it's, the failure is real. Um, it's, it's good to know about minority partitions. Uh, so the, the, the uh, definition can, I guess, vary between Zen and Eska. So Zen, you've probably heard about minimum master nodes. Uh, so that's the number of master nodes that you need to be able to see. Uh, and if that constraint is violated, so that's when with Zen you have minority partition. With Eska, we are basically using uh, the seed nodes, so a quorum of that. Um, and I should mention that failure detection is a very hard problem, and it's fairly fuzzy because you can't have perfect accuracy and completeness. Uh, so it's kind of best guess. But once you do decide uh, that there's been a failure, uh, then you might need to take action. Like if it's the minority partition, what do you do? Uh, so previously, you could the approach was to basically block all operations, whether they're reads or writes. But if you're OK with some uh, inconsistency on the minority partition, uh, there's this new option called no master block, where you can set it to write, and only uh, writes will not be allowed. But we'll just use the last known cluster state and, for example, serve searches uh, on those nodes. And uh, yeah, once, once you detect a failure, you, one uh, thing to do is definitely to remove the suspect, or if it is the master, you want to trigger failover. Uh, so just to summarize, yeah, we talked about all these uh, dimensions for Zen and Eska, and this is actually how, not how the API for discovery module is structured. It's uh, just a grouping of responsibilities that I found useful uh, for, for this talk. And I want to go off on a bit of a tangent now. Uh, so you might have read the blog post, uh, Call Me Maybe, testing Elasticsearch using this tool called Jepson. And when the first one was published, a lot of attention was around split brains and seeing multiple masters. That particular issue is uh, no longer a problem, uh, even with Zen. But discovery is actually only a part of the puzzle. And there's still some way to go uh, for Elasticsearch to be passing these tests. And 
That's because what Jepson is testing actually has a lot more to do with replication semantics, so document uh, the writes you're making. And so what it's testing is if you have a write and it's acknowledged by the system, even if you're doing funky stuff like killing nodes, it shouldn't be lost. And uh, so the kind of thing that come into play here are uh, what kind of guarantees that acknowledgement is actually giving you. Uh, and how, uh, so uh, from the set of replicas, how do you pick a primary? And I think th there's some issues there, and uh, that's a GitHub issue to follow if you're interested. Uh, so although Jepson was really more about document replication semantics, I think if you, uh, it's interesting to evaluate Elasticsearch discovery as a distributed store, even though it really isn't. And if it was, uh, cluster state would be the only document. And so we can use that same kind of uh, idea in evaluating uh, the properties when it comes to the safety and persistence of updates. Uh, so here I'm trying to delete the Marvel index template. Uh, so this is, uh, you'll remember, in the metadata section of the cluster state. So we care about the persistence of this. And Elasticsearch is telling me that um, it's been acknowledged. So what does that acknowledgment mean? Um, so I'll, I'll come to that before, but before let's uh, see what's going on under the hood when there's any cluster state change. Um, so internally, these requests are implemented by this uh, abstraction called update task, which is essentially a function from the old cluster state to the new cluster state. And they go into this queue, and they're processed uh, from a single thread asynchronously. Um, and you can actually see the state of your queue, uh, take a peek into it by hitting that endpoint, which is very handy. And it can actually be quite informative to figure out if publishing is currently a bottleneck for you. And there are several different Im implementations of uh, data. Like... And they all provide different guarantees. Uh, so with the, the, with the first three there, they're only just uh, giving you callbacks for the state when the update has been processed locally. So the first one's just giving you a failure callback and a success callback. And finally, the, with the timeout task, you get a callback in case there's a timeout. So additional guarantees as we go down. And the final one is most useful for us, I think, uh, when it comes to these metadata updating things. And so here, uh, we are waiting on acknowledgments from other nodes, or we are able to, and if know when there's a timeout in those acknowledgments or if the desired number was achieved. And by default, uh, with this, you require an acknowledgment from every node in the cluster. Uh, so I, I thought this would be implemented with the act cluster state update task, but it was actually this uh, timeout version, so I don't think the acknowledgment here is real. Uh, it actually turns out that most requests are done uh, with the ACT cluster state update task. I just stumbled across one that wasn't. So mostly, uh, I think it, it just needs an order to make sure the semantics are correct, but mostly it's uh, with the acknowledgement version. Uh, and in conclusion, I'd just say that uh, I think the discovery system of Elasticsearch overall is pretty workable. And I think the primitives are all there for it being a reliable way to do uh, the cluster coordination and the ability to basically replace Elasticsearch discovery altogether with a plugin is pretty awesome. I don't know if uh, any other distributed system that gives you that kind of ability. Uh, and there's, I'm very excited about some of the work that's going on in improving the document replication semantics. Uh, like there's a talk later today about sequence numbers. And for, so, so uh, besides other things, that can help with figuring out which is the most uh, recent replica, so we can pick it as the primary rather than any of them, which happens right now. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you.